Hey everybody, welcome back once again to the America's Army OP cast. I am Dev Tots, joined by... Dev Rorster. And special guest... Dev Cardigan. Man, it's been a while, hasn't uh, it? It's been a long time. I'm not sure when our last podcast was, nope. um, but this update that we've got coming out tomorrow, if you're listening to this tomorrow than today, <laughs> is a doozy. Uh, Dev Cardigan has been at work for months now, remaking our net code. Um, I'm using all the wrong words, I'm sure he'll oh, correct me on that, but... What you and I know is netcode. That's what he's been working on, you know. Um, and of course, with this with this update, we've got a host of quality of life updates and, and bug fixes and stuff. But you know, the main focus and the focus of this podcast today is going to be those netcode changes. Uh, netcode's a pretty fair way to group the changes together, uh, though technically they're not netcode changes. Uh, from a programming perspective, I call netcode more of a uh, you know, the actual data going back and forth and the methods used to send the data back and forth and not uh, not everything I changed fits under those guidelines. So. Sure. Well, so let's kind of start from the top. Uh, you know, you started looking into our netcode, how we handle things. Um, what have you changed, like, in, in broad strokes? Like, what, what are these big improvements? Because I know you gave me a long bullet list, and that's going to be up in the patch notes and on the uh, website at our official blog. But... Uh, What's the short version there? Uh, the short version is uh, when you're developing a game, um, you need to update something here, you need to update something there, and um, you put it where you need it. Uh, but the long version is over time, you don't realize you need to consolidate all those updates specifically in one location, and that's when you send and receive your network packets. Uh, so a lot of this has been the game data now updates when you send send to the server and the server updates when it receives from you. Uh, and what this does uh, is it prevents a lot of the cases we were seeing in the game where uh, the server would need to send you a correction because uh, before the server was updating at whatever its tick rate was and the client was updating at whatever its frames per second was. So as it hits these updates that are in differing locations in code, uh, they'd update at different times, and naturally the data would get out of sync. Okay. Kind of what, as a player, should they expect to see from this on, on their side of things? Uh, so the best general description I can give is in the current version of the build, like before this patch. Uh, when the server sends you a correction, it looks like lost FPS. That's the best way I can describe it to you. Um, essentially, if you're playing at 60 FPS, when it sends you a correction, it might look more like 30 or 20. Uh, now, after this patch, you're getting way less. I mean, probably 90%, not more, less of these packets from the server. And what that will do is uh, the game looks visually better. The game is more visually crisp. You don't get these we, updates. Uh, we played on you know this new version that you've been working on internally for months. And then one day we got with our closed beta guys, and we said, all right, we're going to play you know, on the, the new code, and then we're going to hop over to the open, we're going to play again. Most of us found it unplayable. That is, <laughs> to the degree of the changes that we're seeing here, it felt like we were moving in molasses. Like, you have made everything so much more snappy. It's really impressive. And I think, you know, everyone's going to appreciate it. I, I'm definitely not a high-level player. I, mean, I can appreciate it. I can only imagine, you know, our comp guys, our Colts, and our, you know, those guys, how they're going to feel about the changes. And, uh... Can you kind of speak to the comp guys, maybe at their level a little bit, about what they can expect in, as far as improvements in their gameplay? All right, so uh, a good simple example, right, is uh, like when you're what we would call vaulting over an object. So if you're sticking your hand on it and you're jumping over in it and running across and then trying to you know, move rapidly over terrain... Uh, before you would get sent corrections while you were doing that from the server and it wouldn't uh, those corrections make it harder to see your environment uh, so you will have a better situ situational awareness with this patch uh, a good example um, I tend to be more sensitive to higher frame rates so at home I play on a 144 hertz monitor and the game looks uh, before the patch on the 144 hertz monitor, honestly, it's not all that different from anyone else's monitor, but after the patch, you're going to see a marked improvement on the clarity uh, when you're running at higher frame rates, especially. Now, 
one thing you mentioned earlier and is in the notes as well in more detail, but you were talking about, you know, your for, your client is running 200 frames per second, and let's say the server is running at like a 30 tick rate, right? So 30 frames a second for the server. And you're talking about the conflict of those things. And, you know, most players aren't running at 200 frames a second. Typically, that's going to be your comp guys, your pro players. So they've probably been more affected by this than anyone else. So I feel like they're probably going to really notice that right off the bat. I know it feels more smooth, but are we also seeing better frame rates in general as a result of these changes? So that's trickery. Okay. All right, and that's trickery in that your client, while it's sending at what the, the rate the server wants you to send, it's also updating in between those sends. Uh, and I talk about that in the notes a little bit, that I updated the client's packet combiner, and that packet combiner is allowing the client to put multiple frames together before it does a send to the server and uh, so what this in effect does is your client might have seven frames to one on the server if you're running at 200 fps for example and uh, but you can see it visually you don't need the updates from the server at that rate to get the gameplay at that rate increased server tick rate really wouldn't matter at this point is that correct Increased server tick rate only reduces the, the latency in the game systems by the re- increase of, in the server's tick rate. So uh, if you want to be super technical on this, uh, at 30 frames per second, you're running at 0.03333 per frame. At 90 frames per second, you're running at 0.01111. I can tell you, you perceptibly, most people cannot tell the difference between those rates. Uh, and that's all the reduction you get by upping the tick rate on the server. At uh, And upping the tick rate on the server also has consequences in that uh, hiccups. Like if one frame takes too long, will be felt far more drastically, among okay. other things. And uh, you're updating... You're not necessarily needing more net updates with that either, so... So we've got a lot of, you know, uh, around 200, I think, the last time I checked, community-run servers. Um, would you suggest to the guys when this update rolls out, Not a lot of guys will run, like, a custom tick rate, a few custom settings on their server. Uh, do you think everyone should just try it vanilla, give it a few days, and see? Because, you know, if they jump in with different settings than, than what you kind of have planned, they may not get all the improvements, or they may not notice it as much. Do you think that everyone should maybe run vanilla, at least give it a week, and and test out your code or uh, absolutely and uh, I've been watching a few comp games and some other things here lately and I know they like to use server side hit detection and run higher tick rates uh, but actually I'm with you I would highly recommend that they just leave the settings as they are uh, we're doing our testing on those settings uh, all the changes are to benefit for those settings um, you won't get very much improvement if any out of a higher tick rate on the server to be completely honest and uh, well, then if your, your server hardware isn't good enough or your network there isn't good enough and you're running at that higher tick rate, you're just going to have a worse experience. Well, there's, there's clamps on the amount of net traffic that can go back and forth. Uh, so raising the tick rate on the server doesn't actually raise the, that amount of data to any significant value. We, okay. we did some testing on it, and um, honestly, just there wasn't any, any improvement, really, from what anyone could tell. Uh, so, yes, please try the vanilla settings. That's... Uh, it's co- comes highly recommended. We'll now go you, with that. You mentioned the comp guys like their server side hit detection. You have been neck deep in our air quotes net code for a while now. Uh, I'd say you're probably our best. I would say you know currently with who's in the studio, you're probably our most knowledgeable person on the hit code of America's Army Proving Grounds, right? Server side or client side? Uh, our game is built for client side. So these comp guys that are running server side, do you think that it is it is hurting their experience? Do you think that it's making the games not as good? Uh, uh, is it that much of a difference? I hate to work in absolutes because I'm I don't right yeah <laughs> as a programmer we just don't work in absolutes. But you know but, the comp um, guys are going to want to run in the best, most accurate competitive environment, and if that isn't server side, they they are I can say without a doubt they are hurting themselves by right? running server side hit detection with our game. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> Send all hate mail to Cargan at America's Army. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while we've done significant updates here, we are checking other systems outside of what has been updated. And uh, there are some things that could cause issues with server-side hit detection, uh, at least I believe. I can't verify any of this with data yet or anything. I'm working on it. And, uh, you know, that that's not up to me. I'm just a programmer. I work on my tasking and, uh, you know, I can't make any promises or 
uh, you have to ask ask these other guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we're going to have you know a patch notes thread like we always do. I'm going to run a secondary thread that is just on the netcode. Uh, and, you know, Dev Cardigan's going to be active in that thread answering your guys' questions. You can also just direct message him on the forums. Uh, and, you know, you guys, you server hosts who still want to run server-side, if you see stuff, if you have questions about that, I'm, I'm sure they could send that to you and maybe you can talk with them. Uh, yeah, we can talk more specifics on that. Uh, I want to bring up one more thing here, um, especially with the early on testing for this patch. Yeah. Uh, players... Uh, and, and a general server, admins, I, I'd like you to ask you to be a little more lenient on players with higher ping. And uh, the reasoning behind that is uh, these changes make playing with a higher ping exceedingly far better than it used to be. That is something we definitely noticed. Uh, we would play test with our betas, our, our European team, and we would play on servers in, in their neck of the woods. It felt as good as playing at home. Yeah, it felt yeah, really good. Yeah, now, um, and this might sound funny, but we were getting... Uh, reports from the betas that uh, they were getting shot after they got behind a wall. And uh, this might sound odd, but that's fantastic feedback. That means they're seeing their latency. They're not seeing like a problem in the game. That's right. actual latency in, in your internet connections. And that's, that, that's, that's fine, really. You can't compensate for what you don't know. Uh, that's that's what that that's what that is, right? If somebody with 500 ping shoots you, and uh, the server says, "Hey, yeah, they shot you," you're not going to get that until half a second or about a quarter of a second, depending on, and uh, you'll get it after the fact. But that means um, the netcode's working as intended. Exactly. Um, so of course, you said you know be more lenient of netcode, and then you followed that up immediately with, "Yeah, but high netcode guys throw stuff off. 500 is a bit much." Oh yeah, what, yeah. yeah. What, I know we don't want to give a hard, fast magic number because there is not one. But do you have anything in your mind of, yeah, I'd still consider that very playable? Uh, uh, 200, 250, 3? I actually consider 250 to 300 pretty playable now. Okay. Uh, and that, uh, if both players are around that value, uh, you'll get your updates about a quarter second after they actually occur. And All that's right. uh, it's not terrible. Right, you and might, that's a marked improvement over what we used to have. Oh yeah, yeah, but in the uh, in the previous version, I wouldn't I wouldn't honestly play with more than 150 ping at worst. Uh, and even on the uh, development environment here, I went from uh, test my test parameters would normally be around 75 ping, and now I actually run my test parameters at 500 ping. Interesting. Uh, and and uh, yeah, and, you know, it makes a big difference. Okay. That about wraps up the, this quick overview. Again, if you guys want to get an in-depth conversation about this, we will have a thread for it. And uh, Cardigan would love to put you to sleep with long amounts of programmer <laughs> talk. He is very good at explaining things. He's very good at breaking it down. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy working with him uh, to learn about these changes. Uh, our next update is going to be in November. Yep. Uh, that's going to bring forward our three user-made map winners. It will. Yeah, just a quick update on those. I know... People are probably expecting those to be ready. Um, they're just about our. Uh, we're just wrapping up a few more things on them, and they'll be ready to go. Uh, again, there, there were three three winners, so expect mm -hmm. those three maps. And we are going to go ahead and release both BDX and Flow versions of them, because it's kind of, yeah. why not? Which, Flow, Jungle Trash, and Furious is going to be the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> that is going to be madness. Yeah. So. Um, also look for slightly different map names. Uh, like, that's just called Furious right. now. which should clean things up a little bit, make things a little more palatable. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, that'll, that'll be the big thing for next month's patch, so keep an eye out for that. Everybody, you have a, have a safe Halloween. Enjoy the holidays. We will catch up with you with our next update in November.